So this is the Mamiya Universal, which is a modular medium format range finder introduced in 1969. That's right. This thing is super, super old. It's superseded. In fact, if I can keep using the word super, uh, a lot of uh, press 4x5 cameras in the 1970s and 1980s because there isn't a huge degradation in terms of image quality from 4x5 to 6x9. So these we're workhorses and they are finicky and they are heavy. And you know what happens with old cameras that were workhorses? They tend to fall apart. So let's get into what I like and what I don't like about this camera and my little review of the Mia Universal. So this camera, like I mentioned, is modular, which is a huge pro when it comes to being able to adapt different lenses, different film backs, different rangefinders, different accessories, all types of different things. Um, this right here was sort of the reason why I got the camera, which is the 100 millimeter f2.8 Mamiya lens. This is the fastest lens that Mamiya ever made for the press series of cameras, which is kind of astounding. Typically, these cameras came with a standard 100 millimeter f 3.5, which I've heard is very, very good. But this is the lens that I really, really wanted. Uh, and stark contrast to the 65 millimeter lens on the Fuji GSW. Now, when I started using this lens, there are a couple of issues. And when I bought it, none of these issues were even told to me. They said fully functional, perfectly working condition. But as you can see right now, focuses nicely in and out. But when I got it, it was near seized. And the reason was because the helicoid was full of old gunked up grease from Mamiya when they brought it, when they sold it from the factory. And uh, I had to go in, partially disassemble and clean out the helicoid and uh, re-lubricate and everything. And then I got the focusing back to where it should be nice and smooth, which also brought me to another issue, which this, let me see if I can show you focus properly you see that little pin right there that is the rangefinder coupling mechanism which goes to the little pin as you can see right in the camera and as you focus in and out it presses that pin up and down which actuates the rangefinder so you can find focus pretty simple but what i found was this thing was not focusing from 10 feet to three feet three feet being close focusing which is a pretty big issue and while i had the baffling off i realized that it wasn't having that issue anymore. So the baffling was causing the actuation here, this this pin, from going from 10 feet to 3 feet. Uh, and when I reached out to the seller, they were like, we did see that. It wasn't listed in the, the details, which is suspect. Um, but they told me something that kind of cl clarified things a little bit. They actually pulled the baffling off of the older version of this lens. This is the new version, the all black, technically referred to as the blue dot, 100 millimeter f2.8, but they also had an older one, a single coated with a silver back to it. They pulled the baff baffling off of that back and put it onto this one, and they just thought everything was good, uh, which it wasn't. Apparently that baffling is slightly different than this one, but I just made a little modification, as you can see, just with some shears metal shears and just kind of cut that off spot glued it back on which is what Mamiya did from the factory anyway so I'm not doing anything different than Mamiya did um and it's working now everything is good the lens is fully operational and uh just a lot of fun to use to be honest what I'm not used to with this lens though is the depth of field it is razor thin and you expect it to be razor thin if you're shooting at f2.8 but when you Stop your lens down to f4, f5.6, and even at f8, I've found that the depth of field is not very large. So zone focusing is sort of taken out of the equation unless you're at f22, uh, which is what I typically do when I shoot night scenes. Um, so you have to be really precise with your focusing or you're going to potentially misfocus. 
um, because that depth of field is so, so thin. And it's uh, it's a definite adjustment that you have to make when it comes to shooting this lens. Now, obviously, it's modular, which means there's a lot of pieces that come on and off. This is a fairly standard back with one minor adjustment that makes it a whole lot easier to shoot. In fact, this is what typically comes on a Mamiya Universal or a Mamiya Super 23. This goes in over here. You can shoot there and you find focus with your right hand, which is unorthodox to say the least. Not something that I'm used to, not something that I was happy with when I got it because it just kind of made it a lot more difficult, a lot less seamless. But this back in particular has completely rectified that issue. This is the Type 3 back, and as you can see here, it has a built-in shutter release with a little bit of added grip because of that shutter release. But this takes it from a left-hand shooting experience to a traditional right-hand shooting experience, which has made worlds of a difference for me uh, because I'm more accustomed to shooting with the right hand more so than the left hand. Can't, how about I don't knock that thing around? I'm still getting used to this microphone. Anyways, this back is revolutionary, I think, but they only made these from 1988 to 1991. So three years these things were around, which means they're in short supply. An even shorter supply is this, which is required to use it. This is a standard, fairly standard uh, cable release but modified slightly to fit into the butt. And then you take this side and you put it into your lens. These, like I said, were only made for three years, so they are in short supply. And when you can find them, which is not very often, they're very, very expensive. In fact, this one little cable went for $212 last July on eBay. And the one previous to that was $186, which showed up in February. So these are not very common. They don't come around. There was only three that were sold last year. And then uh, as of three weeks ago, I was the one to buy this one. When I got it, I paid $300 for the back and the cable, but it was also supposed to come with a six by seven back, which the seller then told me the six by seven back has advanced issues and he didn't feel comfortable selling it. So instead of canceling the order, he just refunded me $150. So I paid $150 with shipping included for the back and the cable, which is quite a deal honestly uh, and it makes my shooting experience a whole lot more fun with this camera Now I haven't taken this thing out to go shoot many like project style stuff because I'm still in the sort of working out phase trying to figure out how this thing functions. I've double exposed so many images because I forgot to advance or I thought I advanced and I still fired the shutter or times where I've advanced past the frame because I thought that I didn't advance before. So I've made so many mistakes. But the other great pro of this particular film back, which is a 6x9, by the way, is that the dark slide, when inserted, won't allow the camera or the film back to, sh to fire. So you don't necessarily make a lot of mistakes with this. When I was shooting with the left-hand grip and the other 6x9 back I have, I was making mistake after mistake after mistake. And a lot of that was due to mainly just not being accustomed to having a dark slide and the lens being more akin to a large format lens where you cock the shutter, you find your uh, shutter speed and your aperture on here and you have a release here for your hand and then you have the cable release right over here. So there's a couple of ways to shoot the lens but there's just so many mistakes that can be made but this back certainly helps alleviate one of those big mistakes that I was making which was forgetting that the dark slide was in. Kind of a big one especially when you're losing money on frames 
that are completely blank. Kind of a bummer. But like I said, I haven't really taken this thing on a legitimate project yet just because I'm still working out a lot of things. And uh, over the last month, we've had a lot of changes go on here. It's been very, very busy. It's been harder to make videos, so I apologize for that. But there's going to be more videos to come, and I'm going to be making more with this as I get more comfortable with it. Uh, I recently picked up my uh, my dream car, the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness, which I am in absolute love with. Uh, I've taken a lot of pictures of it with this camera. Um, and those subsequently have probably been my, been my favorite images. But once I get more comfortable, I'm going to take it out on, on projects and I'm going to take it out for longer form videos, which you guys see on the channel all the time. And uh, hopefully this thing starts to work into my workflow. Um, kind of working in tandem with the Fuji GSW with the 65 millimeter lens going back and forth. Not ideal because they're both very, very big cameras and they're, they take up a lot of space in my bag. But ultimately, I'm really happy with the image quality. It's such a stark contrast from the GSW where almost everything is in focus to this lens where almost nothing is in focus. I, that's dramatic. But you have a much smaller depth of field and uh, you really need to be precise with your focusing, which also... Uh, helps to have a good accurate range finder. I've seen a lot of people say that they hate this camera because they can't find focus accurately. And a lot of that is due to these cameras being so old and being so used and uh, the range finder just being slightly off. It's fairly easy to adjust the range finder, which I did. You take off this plate. There's a couple of screws here and there, all that stuff. And then you pop the top plate off and then you can find the screws, um, which is not that difficult, but far easier on other rangefinders that I've used. Um, but make sure that your rangefinder is coupled correctly. Do all your adjustments. Make sure that you're able to find focus because if you're not, you're going to have a bad time and you're going to hate this camera. And uh, it's not light. It's not small. It's a lot smaller without the left-hand grip, but still very cumbersome to shoot. But speaking of the rangefinder, this thing is huge. It's so big. I don't know where my GSW is. I think it's in the other room. But the rangefinder is huge. It's super big. It's super bright. The patch is really contrasty. In fact, I find it to be light years ahead of the Fuji GSW Mark III in terms of visibility through the rangefinder, which is a really nice added benefit to this gigantic system. Um, it's just, it, it feels better. Feeling it out. That's where we're at right now. I'm sorry there's not a lot of B-roll in this video. I'm just trying to feel everything out. That's where we are. Well, anyways, that'll wrap it up. I'll see you guys all in the next one.